everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, oddly enough, it is going to be one that doesn't match any of those criteria because we are covering a feathery friend the oh-so-wonderful Snow Goose. This podcast episode is dedicated to Jack from Jordana. Happy Valentine's Day, you guys, and happy Valentine's Day to all of you around the globe, wherever you're listening, in the U.S., Australia, U.K., it doesn't matter where you guys are. Happy Valentine's Day by the time this episode um is released, or by the time, sorry, the next episode will be released on the 15th. Valentine's Day would have already passed, so I know I'm a bit early here, but it is um, the only way I can say it before the 14th. So, Jack, we hope you enjoy this Valentine's Day present from Jordana, and I suppose from me as well. I hope this podcast episode will be to your liking as the snow goose i'm sure it's going to be a very fun episode but bear in mind here guys this podcast might be a bit shorter um, than the usual uh, sometimes with some of these animals that you guys request they're very cool they're very awesome but sometimes there's not too too many facts but we'll worry about that in a second I would first like to go to a review on Apple Podcasts from Leah Bean. Leah Bean writes, I would just like to say thank you so much for this podcast. It's very relaxing and I use it to go to sleep because I get scared really easily, even though I'm 13. I really love how open-minded this is and I really love how it picks out one specific animal not a whole load of animals. I also have a request for a future episode. Could you do one on donkeys? I have five miniature Mediterranean donkeys whom I love very much. Most have round bellies and we like to say that they are round because they're filled with love. Wow, that is, (laughs) Leah, thank you so much for writing into the show. I can't tell you I am grinning like a like a total idiot right now. That is a very cute review from you. Thank you for the five-star review and thank you for bringing a smile to my face and I'm sure to many faces all around the globe that are listening to today's episode. I have to say that when it comes to miniature donkeys, miniature Mediterranean donkeys that is it is leah five and steph wolf zero i have no uh, mediterranean donkeys uh, unfortunately but i'm very glad that you have enough for the both of us if you want to leave a wonderful review like leah just did you can um, leave one on apple podcasts stitcher sort of wherever you listen um It always brings such a smile to my face, and it also helps grow the podcast as well. So the more followers, the more, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, guys, that you do for the show, which I'm just so grateful for, helps grow the show and helps more people relax to animal facts with us in our little animal podcast family. So now let's get into the show. I want all of you to sort of scan your bodies. See, where are you harboring some tension? Is it in your calves, maybe? Is it in your neck, in your shoulders? Who knows? For me today, I got to say it's in my back again. For me, it's almost always in my back. So I want all of you to notice where that is for you specifically and with you Let's go ahead and try to release that tension, sink into whatever you're sitting into. Maybe it's a couch, maybe it's a bed, or who knows, maybe you're still walking around regardless. Let's release some of that tension as we go into this immersive experience with me, Steph Wolf, into the fields where snow geese reside. 
So I got my facts from nationalgeographic.com, allaboutbirds.org, and chesapeakebay.net. So if you guys want to learn more about the snow goose, please go to those resources and learn more. They, they have some really, really great information um, that made this episode possible. So for the first fact of the episode... The snow goose are particularly known for their white plumage, but many of them are actually darker, gray-brown birds that are known as blue geese. These birds were once thought to be two entirely different species, but they have only recently been found to just be two different color morphs of the same bird and a single gene will control that specific color difference. So in the snow geese, we can see how nature, and specifically the animal kingdom, uh, can be so much more than meets the eye. And I think that we've learned so much on this podcast about that specifically. And it's cool to see here that even though two different birds or two different looking birds rather can be one in the same with just one single gene difference and snow geese are herbivores luckily enough guys i have actually been chased by a goose before um not a snow goose in particular but that day i was very happy to be assured that um they were not carnivores so herbivores is a very fancy way of saying that they don't eat any meat, okay? Their diet consists of grasses and grains grazed from damp soils or even shallow water. And I have to say that not only am I grateful they are not um, carnivores, I'm also grateful no one was around me with a cell phone because I'm sure that I would be uh, on the internet somewhere if that were the case. And they also weigh anywhere from three and a half pounds to about seven and a half pounds. So for those of you that use kilograms, don't worry, I've done the work for you. That's about one and a half kilos to about three and a half kilos. So again, they're not going to be that heavy and that dense. And let's ask ourselves why that is. We find that these birds that look to be just a little bit heavier, maybe like the flamingo or some of the other birds that we've covered, even the puffin last episode, they're going to be lighter than what we think when we look at them. This is due to the nature of birds in general. They are not going to be as dense because that could take away their ability to fly or at least fly comfortably and in its snow phase the snow goose's body is mostly white with black wingtips in its blue phase as we learned a little bit earlier its body is going to be that grayish blue color and it has a pink serrated bill with a black grin patch on the side and its feet and legs are red. Adults will grow to be about 38 inches in length with a wingspan of about 59 inches. So we see the wingspan being uh, much longer or significantly longer than the length of its whole body. And again, very, very common in many bird species. This helps for aerodynamic purposes. It helps for glide and lift and all these sorts of uh, terms that are used to describe aerodynamics. And lucky for them, they have a large enough wingspan that it makes flying more of a breeze. Snow geese are harbingers of the changing seasons. They fly south for the winter in huge honking flocks that may appear as a V formation, that signature V formation, or simply as a large snowstorm, as it's called, of white 
birds. So if we caught that earlier, a group of snow geese is going to be called a flock, okay? And I guess in a larger sense, it can also be referred to as a snowstorm. So they spend the colder seasons in southern coastal marshes, bays, wet grasslands, and fields. So at the top of the show, when I say where the animal is from, sometimes it is from more than just that place. But I, I like to make it short and sweet at the beginning. And here we know that they can be prominent in more than just fields. And that includes the bays, the marshes, and the grasslands. So at winter's end, the snow geese will fly north to their breeding grounds on the Arctic tundra. So now we're getting into some of that snow goose behavior. The pairs will mate for life, something that's not uncommon among many bird species, and they will produce two to six eggs each year in a shallow ground nest. Chicks can swim and eat on their own within just 24 hours, but families remain together through the young's first winter. Families can be identified as groups during both the southern and northern migrations. So I'm just going to take a quick break here and get a, a drink of my tea. Of course, as many of you know that maybe have followed the podcast for some time, um, chamomile, I have to say, is my favorite tea, and that's exactly what I'm drinking. And in the future, I hope, I hope that I will have my own brand of Relax with Animal Facts um, chamomile tea that you guys can drink along with me if you'd like. So for those of you that are not already snoozing, you can take a drink with me there of whatever you got, maybe water, maybe tea. It's good to stay hydrated, right? So for those of you that are new to the show and this is your first episode, it is something that I sometimes do on the show, drink tea. It may seem a bit weird, but don't worry, as we go together through these um, animals together week after week, I'm sure that you'll come to, if not enjoy it, maybe, maybe just tolerate it. Anyways, back to the facts. In 1916, snow geese had become so rare in the eastern United States that hunting of the species was entirely banned. Since that time, the birds have made a very remarkable comeback. And today, though hunting has been reinstated, populations are thriving. In fact, the birds have become so numerous in places that they threaten to destroy their very own habitat. Now, therein lies sometimes the problem with overpopulation of some species. It is that sometimes nature will sort of correct for this overpopulation. When you have a lot of snow geese, that is going to require a lot of vegetation. It's going to require a lot to um, continue to feed that many snow geese. So sometimes what can happen is that there will be a lack of food or exactly that thing that has helped them get to these numbers in the first place. And the snow goose has one of the largest populations of any goose in the world. The snow goose rank behind only Canadian geese in population size and harvest. So I have to say that covering a species that is not endangered is a, is a breath of fresh air because sometimes uh, it really sucks to read uh, those things, but it's great to hear that the snow goose is doing well, but it sounds like maybe it's doing just a bit too well according to this article. So some quick facts for you here. Newly hatched snow geese, or they're called goslings. I'm not sure if goslings are the scientific term, but newly hatched little baby snow geese will have golden fuzz. So they'll be very 
very cute. And snow geese cover their first eggs with moss and grass to act as a kind of insulation against uh, the cold. So to allow them to be as warm as possible during those cold times that the snow geese are relatively used to. Arctic foxes have been known to steal snow goose eggs from the nests, and foxes can be very sly, very quick, um, and sometimes they they will be able to, to catch a good few um, on their hunting kind of exhibition there. But lucky for us, there are plenty of little golden fuzzed snow goslings to go around. And when it comes to their voice, so I am not going to do their call because that would definitely defeat the entire purpose of this podcast. But their call is described as a very shrill and very nasal laouk sound or haouk haouk. So when it comes to our little baby snow goslings, females will lay three to five eggs, which are then incubated for 23 to 25 days, incubated with that moss and grass like we learned before. And within two years, the young will reach maturity. The lifespan of the snow goose is currently unknown, but it is believed to be more than 15 years in the wild, which is a lot of time when it comes to many bird species. So when it comes to the final fact of the episode, which is the name Goose, where does it come from? It um, is mostly giving me things to do with the actual, like a name for a human being as a surname, as a last name. So I can't find the exact origins as to why geese are called geese. But it says that uh, in Germanic languages, the root gave Old English gos with the plural ges and gandres, which becomes the modern English goose, geese, gander, gosling, and on and on. So it seems to have roots in Germanic um, and Old English there. So that's very cool. But I, I, I was hoping for just a little more, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But anyways, that is the final fact of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to support the show, you can follow the podcast on Spotify. You can leave a rating or a review wherever you listen. Apple Podcasts and iTunes are the sort of main way, but also Stitcher as well. If you want to help the show even more, on the relaxwithanimalfacts.com website, there is a Patreon page. There is also a link to PayPal. So if you want to support the show in that way, I am so, so grateful. And I'm very grateful for those of you that support the show this way already through Patreon and those other means. You guys really help keep the show going. So thank you all so very much for listening. I'm so grateful that you have joined me in this episode as we learned about the snow goose. And I hope to see you on the next podcast episode with the next animal. Take care.